Good morning again. It's afternoon on a rainy day for me. Hopefully it's sunny and, or you're in class and I can see you. Uh, we're going to do chapter 16 of a regular history book, A History uh, of Us. And this one's uh, Puritans again, but it's of towns and schools and sermons. Uh, this one's a long one. Hopefully I won't, make, uh, I won't get lost like last time reading with the phone. It is a little tough. All right. <laughs> All right, so wish me luck. Of towns and schools and sermons. At first, the New England settlers built their homes behind high fences called stockades. They were fearful of the unknown, of Indians and animals. Soon they began spreading out beyond the fences into small towns with names like Greenfield, Springfield, and Long Meadow. The names described the land. Many of those early settlements were just a row of houses strung alongside abandoned Indian fields that the English settlers found and took. They lived with Indians as neighbors, although their animals sometimes made that difficult. The Native Americans hunted animals. They had no horses, cows, sheep, or hogs. The Indians soon discovered that those English grazing animals could destroy their cornfields. In 1653, the people of the town of New Haven agreed to work for 60 days to build fences around fields planted by neighboring Indians. New England's courts ordered colonists to pay the Indians for damage done to their fields by wandering animals. So this is kind of nice. At first there is some helpful laws, right, that kind of help Native Americans. Um, they're called Indians in this book sometimes uh, because that's what the colonists called them. As the colonists began to prosper, they built towns in America. There was something like the villages they, were, they left behind in Europe. They were compact, easy to defend, and friendly. Castles and manor houses dominated European towns. In New England's villages, it was the church, a town hall, and a social center. Oh, sorry, the meeting house was used as a... Uh, it was the meeting house that stood out. Sorry, the meeting house was used as a church, a town hall, and a social center. It was usually placed at one end of a big field that was called a common, because everyone used it in common. Sometimes there were sheep to chew the field's grass and keep it short and green. The common was called a green. Houses were built around the green. The houses nearest the meeting house belonged to the most important people in town, the ministers and the church leaders. So we still have uh, commons and greens today. Um, in Wareham, there's a common and a green. So that's, this is basically what we're talking about, where you live right now. Many villages had a stream, and so did Wareham. The tumbling water of the stream turned a big wheel, and that provided power for the mills, where wood was sawed and wheat ground into flour. As the town grew, other buildings were added. A general store, a blacksmith shop, a furniture maker shop, a candle maker's. If the town was large enough, there might be an inn. Almost always, there was a school. The Puritans cared about schooling. By 1636... That's only six years, guys, after Boston was formed. In six years, they had founded Harvard College. It was amazing that a college had so soon after they arrived. Although Harvard did get off to a rocky start, the first teacher beat his students, fed them spoiled meat, and ran off with college money. Then they got a college president, Henry Dunster. 
He was so good that students were coming to study with him from Virginia and Bermuda and even England itself. Of course, they were all Puritans. Because of their religions, Puritans weren't allowed to attend college in England. Just like the Quakers and William Penn, right? Un it is unbelievable how mean they were because of religion. It's ugh, disgusting. That was one reason it was so important to have Harvard succeed. To do that, it had to have a supply of students. So, in 1642, the Massachusetts Bay Colony passed a law saying that parents must teach their children to read. The Puritans wanted everyone to be able to read the Bible. That's why there's so many schools in, by the Puritans in Boston and around here. Everyone had to read the Bible to hear the word of God, so they taught you to read, period. Even those who weren't going to Harvard. So the next thing they did was pass a law that said, it is therefore ordered that every township in this jurisdiction after the Lord has increased its number to 50 householders, shall then forthwith appoint one within their town to teach all such children as shall resort to him to write and read, whose wages shall be paid either by the parents or masters of such children or by the inhabitants in general. That means if you got 50 houses, you got to have a teacher by law. This is the first law that makes you have a teacher to read. In plain English, that means every town with 50 or more families must have a school teacher. Do you see something unusual in that law? Read that bit at the end. Shall be paid by the inhabitants in general. Do you know what that means? It means that everyone in the town has to pay for the education of the children. Not just the parents. That's private school. This is what public school is. Because everyone pays for it. Okay? That's what this is saying. Private school would be only if your parents pay for it. Everyone needs to pay for it. That's public. That is what public education is all about. It guarantees that every child, not just those with wealthy parents, can go to school. In America, it all began with that school law in 1647. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Why did they have to go and do it? Who needs school anyway? But you don't really mean it. It isn't fun to be ignorant. In the 17th century, much teaching was done by parents or in church or if you were an apprentice by your master. But the Puritans could see that sometimes that wasn't enough. Some parents just weren't good teachers. And even though many Puritans were highly educated themselves, the Puritans thought it important that everyone read the Bible. In Boston, the larger towns, some children were accepted. Oh, sorry. Actually taught to read the Bible in its original languages. So little Puritan boys and girls of six and seven learned to read Latin and Greek. And a few learned Hebrew, too. That sounds hard, and it, it was. But learning language is great training for the mind. Many of the, this nation's greatest thinkings came from Puritan stock, like John Adams. Here's a cool picture of that New England village. Now, if you go to Sturbridge Village, even though that would be like 100 years later, it's still kind of the same, very similar. Of course, it's a little uh, more advanced than Plymouth um, because that's just at the beginning. Try and take yourself back to Puritan times and see what you think of Sunday church going. Those Puritan ministers gave sermons that lasted for hours and hours. They were more boring than Mr. Gately's. It's awful. Sometimes there was an intermission for lunch, and then everyone went back to hear more. There was no heat in the meeting house, and New England can get very cold. I think you guys know that. People brought warming boxes with hot coals in them. 
to keep their feet from freezing. Sometimes they brought their dogs to church for the same reason. I'm, I don't think I ever brought my dog to church. I don't know about you. A church, a church official held a tickling rod to wake up anyone who looked as if it, he might be falling or asleep. The dog whipper, that's a real job. The dog whipper took out dogs who barked. If you were a troublemaker and wiggled and made noise, you could get locked up in the town stocks. You'd have to sit there with your hands and feet stuck into a wooden contraption and everyone would make fun of you. We know you wouldn't like that kind of life, but maybe things weren't so bad for the Puritan boys and girls. Maybe some of them look, even look forward to the sermons. Remember, in Puritan Massachusetts, there were no movies and no TVs. At, at first, there were no newspapers, no magazines, and only a few books. The Puritans were intelligent people who could read and think well. Maybe that will help you understand why everyone tried to listen to the weekly sermon and why Puritans sometimes spent all week talking about it. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week. Bye.